we are Meekum Bound. Meekum is one of the premier auto auctions in the nation, and this Jeep could be yours in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at the end of the month here in July. It'll be going across the auction block on Thursday, about midday, and this absolutely trick Cherokee XJ could be going home with you. Ultimate 44, why? Because it's the best bang for your buck, honestly, right? I have junkyard axles as a team effort. Those axles were built here over years and I wouldn't do it again necessarily. So for our customers wanting the best possible front axle upgrade, UD44 from Dana Spicer. Now makes it similar in the sense of like the Dynatrax and the Currys, uh, this does not come with uh, knuckle to knuckle. So in theory, you need to take your knuckles off and brakes and unit hub bearings and put them all on. So what we do uh, right here, Greg was already getting this stuff off of our customer shelf there. Check this out. Look at this beautiful. These are the Rancho. Uh, now, this is more important when it comes to the JL because JLs are aluminum knuckles. These are cast both for the JK and the JL series. This is a high steer knuckle. What this does is it actually relocates our steering up and out of the way. This particular Jeep never stuck, hashtag never stuck. I'm calling it hashtag never stuck because uh, hashtag not a restorations owner Ryan uh, is building this to beat on versus uh, hashtag not a restoration because it became a restoration. Anywho, it is going at a, a true four inch plus lift kit. So it's four inches. These are actually, we're using a little bit of a prototype spring from Iron Rock Off-Road. Uh, we're doing a full Iron Rock Off-Road long arm front and rear. Greg is doing a wonderful job. He's already got brackets installed. He gets in early, does all of his air hammering, cutting, uh, bolting, painting, whatever is necessary there uh, to get that front end ready to install. So as he works through the process of the front end, the next big thing we need to do is get into that there front axle. So we're going to see how long it takes me to open this. Oh gosh, I'm breaking stuff. Woo! Got it. There we go. Oh boy. There we go. It's like Indiana Jones and the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Boo! Oh, it's backwards. Boo! There it is, beautiful. So, as we mentioned, UD44, it comes equipped with, uh, this is 513 gears, since we're trying to build a tractor. The track bar pocket is already raised uh, over a stock location. Ball joints are installed. Uh, the brackets, they're not your, your, sta your same stamped thin steel. Everything is, you know, it's heavy gauge broke steel. It has an electronic, or you can do an air locker. This is uh, electronic. This has the same locker in it that the uh, Rubicons have. Chrome Wally upgraded axle shafts with Spicer Solid uh, 13, well, these are 71. Uh, 66 or 1350 series uh, U-joints. Next time you see this, Greg will have it hanging in the Jeep, have those beautiful Rancho knuckles on it. It's ready to just bolt in and add some fluid to it and, and basically run it. So pretty exciting for sure. I'm just gonna sit crisscross applesauce because you know this is like kindergarten savage so all this beef right here the ultimate 44 is in at this point and uh, it's gonna get wired up here very soon fans blowing lots going on right now uh, you've heard me say this before on all the other videos the ultimate series axles are dollar for dollar the best investment on the market 
to gain immediate quality gearing, uh, traction device, and just robust beef. So here it is, it's installed. This is a three link Iron Rock Off-Road. Greg's got that in at this point. Um, it's sitting under its own weight, reasonably speaking. It's still a little bit uh, weighted on the lift arms, but here in the Jeep. And um, next piece is gonna be using this little clippy here, uh, or, or plug for the actual locker mechanism. Again, that, that e-locker that's contained in here uses the same uh, locking mechanism that the Rubicons do. One of the challenges we're running into is uh, the steering stabilizer. We're gonna have to address that yet uh, because this is set up for a little bit of an interesting steering stabilizer uh, based on some logistics from the manufacturer. Uh, so the steering stabilizer to tie rod geometry has to be addressed or clearance and uh, otherwise the track bar bracket reload it comes installed on the axle so the track bar here is already in and hooked up axle is centered the those rancho knuckles brakes are coming they'll be on here very soon and it's going to be big red is going to be ready to go down the trail so this is the old body mount and you can see that we saw some rust in a couple spots but what was really was hiding in there is this was completely full of dirt and mud and if you look at the inside there used to be a reinforcement here for the body bolt and you can see how much worse it looks so i made this this started out as a flat piece of steel we have copied it as best i can uh, I have no idea what this original reinforcement looked like, so I came up with my own design. And I'm doubling up the thickness there. And then we are going to be putting this in there. So we'll have two walls on either side of the bolt. And we'll literally be three layers thick there. And in between each layer, I'm painting, painting it so there's black paint underneath this and inside here to help protect it. And if we bring it over here, these are Clecos. Those that haven't watched before, they allow you to hold the panel on. So once we are done, this will get spot welded here and here. And I made holes on the inside of this. And this has to go over like that, and that will get welded. Surprisingly, from the factory, it was welded here and one bead there and that was it. So it'll actually be stronger than it was originally. And see, we got body bolt hole through the floor, the other one through the tow board. So everything lines up. As Davey came in, I was just welding in these artistry welds for that inner reinforcement. See, I step the panel here so it fits over top of that and there'll be a weld there and there as well. So that is what we're currently working on on the M38 project. The other thing we found is you'll notice there's a big gaping hole here. There was a ton of fiberglass hiding in this area and the inner brace is actually rusted out. So I gotta re repair that and then repair this outer piece and then I'll repair the step. And you can see I have some projected lines of probably where we're gonna be trimmed out to uh, by the time that's done. The other thing we did, this was badly damaged. I repaired that, what we removed. You see how torn and bent and messed up it was. The other thing I did is I smoothed this out a bunch obviously it's still not done that is what we're working on on the m38 project still got a couple cracks to weld up but we're getting there we're getting closer and closer to getting this in the primer and then back onto the frame i don't know what else to talk about at the moment can we talk about why you don't have your ac on right now <laughs> davy got the man sweats that's for you davy Is it?
in and we're gonna talk to you about that beautiful, just perfect Jeep Cherokee XJ. So this one was in today as we get it ready for Mecham, which is gonna be super exciting. You're gonna wanna follow along. There's gonna be a special video for that coming out in the future. We as a staff are going to be traveling down in about two weeks. By the time you're watching this, you're gonna see that we're traveling down to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in preparation or uh, in participation with the Mecham Auto Auctions. This particular Jeep has been in so that we could just do a final once more, once over of it. And additionally, Jim is very, very particular on how clean things lay out. And he wanted to ensure that the potential next owner on this awesome ARB setup that, that the Jeep has. So it's got full onboard air, up down air system, all of your valving here. You can actually uh, run some power tools off of it that there was a plastic push connect fitting on there, like a quarter inch nylon line. Uh, it was blowing based on the heat. It's been one of the criticisms of onboard air for years. ARB has sought to solve that with their braided stainless lines. So Jim came in today for us to kind of do, uh, add that final fit and finish to the air system. It's been on there for years. He's used it successfully, but Sometimes it becomes problematic. He wanted to go ahead and follow through on it and got it in today. Greg took care of it, routed it beautifully, used a new fitting, which is all MPT JIC uh, connection, ran a 90 out of the back, looped it around, and got it inserted to the back of the manifold for the up-down air system. It's been an adventure from start to finish. This one came into our family 11 years ago. Jim and Terry out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've had a, just an absolutely spectacular experience building it out for them. And I think it is going to be equally a fulfilling experience to take this down to Mecham, watch it go across the, 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 the auction block and see who's gonna end up taking this home and loving it as much as we have and they have for the last decade. What else should I do for Tech Tuesday? What do our Tech Tuesday viewers want to see? They want to see about? stunts. They... That was actually kind of impressive. <laughs> 